Continuing our exploration of lesser-known Spanish aircraft from the interwar period, we come to the González Gilpazo GP-1. At the start of the 1930s, Spain was faced with a bit of a challenge. It was trying to modernise its armed forces, whilst also trying to cut costs owing to the financial difficulties brought on by the Great Depression. As the fighter aircraft of the Spanish Air Forces were to be upgraded, a new training aircraft was required as well, but all of this had to be done on a tight budget. To meet this requirement, two Spanish engineers, Arturo González Gil and José Pazo, collaborated to produce a single-engine, two-seat monoplane training aircraft. Both men already had experience in both flying aircraft and designing them, and they had in fact already worked together on and off since they had first met in the 1920s. Their work quickly produced a prototype, known as the GP No. 1. This was a low-wing cantilever monoplane. Unfortunately, no photos of it exist, so you'll have to bear with me using this basic graphic. It had a mixed construction, primarily of wood aft of the cockpits, and mostly steel framing going forward. The control surfaces appeared to have been fabric covered, with the majority of the wing covered by a skin of plywood, and the fuselage appeared to be fabric covered as well, the exception being the nose and engine which had a metal cowling. With a loaded weight of 1,715 pounds, or 777 kilograms, and powered by a 90 horsepower ADC Cirrus 3 engine, it flew for the first time in June of 1932. No production orders were forthcoming for this design, but when the Spanish government renewed its requests for a new training aircraft in 1934, Gil and Pazo submitted an updated design known as the GP-1. Flown for the first time in July of that year, the GP-1 only had a few notable differences from its predecessor. It now had a fared undercarriage to reduce drag, the fuselage structure was now made completely from steel, and the engine was replaced by a 195 horsepower 5.8 litre Walter Jr, which was an air-cooled four-cylinder inline engine. Like the GP No. 1, the wings had a straight leading edge and had semi-elliptical tips. It's unknown if the original came with split flaps, but the GP-1 was specifically advertised in having them. The GP-1 was entered into a competition against three other designs. The Arado 1E7, the Hispano HS21, and the Loring 10. As the only monoplane submission, and with the highest top speed of 212 kilometers an hour, or 132 miles an hour, the GP-1 was the clear winner, and a production order was placed for 100 aircraft. Construction was meant to begin at the Aeronautica Industrial SA factory in Madrid, but the outbreak of the Spanish Civil War curtailed this plan, and construction was instead completed with the assistance of Hispano Suiza, with approximately 40 GP1s being built, along with a couple of experimental models. As built, the GP1 had a wingspan of 11.6 meters, or 37 feet 1 inches, a length of 8.5 meters, or 27 feet 11 inches, and the height of the aircraft is actually unknown. Fully fueled, it had a range of approximately 1,000 kilometers, or 620 miles, and it had a service ceiling of 7,500 meters, or 24,600 feet. Though going up that high with a 195 horsepower engine, in an open cockpit as well, was probably not a pleasant experience. The GP-2 featured an enclosed cabin for up to two occupants, was powered by a 130 horsepower de Havilland Gypsy Major, and was famous for a couple of record-setting flights. One of these was a non-stop journey from Madrid to the city of Bata in Equatorial Guinea, completed at an average speed of 187 kilometers an hour. The GP-4 was designed for up to four people, came with a new fuel system, had an improved undercarriage design, and was powered by a 130 horsepower Walter Major. Only one GP4 was built, and it signalled the end of the collaboration between Arturo Gil and José Paso. The two men had opposing political views. Gil was a communist, and Paso leaned towards the nationalists. After the GP4 was impressed by the Republicans in 1936, Paso took exception to this, 
stole it, and flew it to Nationalist-held territory. After joining the Nationalists, Pazzo took part in several aircraft projects, before eventually moving into other work. Meanwhile, Gill would not actually survive the Civil War, being killed as a foot soldier in the final year of the conflict. As for the 40 GP1s that were built, details on their wartime service are nebulous at best. However, around 30 survived to the end of the Civil War, and were put into service as trainers with the Nationalist Air Force, most of which joining Grupo 30. Some of these remained in service all the way up to the mid-1950s, a considerable achievement for such a lightweight design, and some others, sold into civilian hands, remained on the Spanish Civil Register even longer, with at least two still being used in 1960. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and a big thank you, of course, to the Patreon supporters. I will update all of these details upon my return next month.